Light the candle, tiger! Hi there, welcome along to the Racing Post Golf Postcast. I'm Bruce Millington and I'm joined this week by Ian Wilkerson and star sports golf expert Glenn Day. We will be asking how bad the US PGA was for the bookies as the front two in the betting ended up as the front two on the leaderboard. We'll be asking whether Matt Wallace, an excellent third at Bethpage Black, can convert that into a win back in easier company in Denmark. And we will be looking at the American tournament where Justin Rose bids to successfully defend his title at Colonial. First of all, though, normally bad news when the players at the head of the market are the players who dominate the event. Was that the case, Glenn? Did Star Sports and the rest of the injury industry do their brains on the US PGA? The Star Sports didn't, I can confirm. Uh, it wasn't the best result in the world, obviously. As you said, the front two in the world fighting out to finish. Uh, we managed to show a small profit. Uh, John Rahm and Jason Day were worst two results. We lost one of those at the halfway stage. They never really in contention. So, yeah, uh, we're not licking our wounds this week. Who would you have preferred? Would Because um, I went to bed thinking it was all over, but it actually got quite interesting, didn't it? Would you have yeah. preferred Justin to have nicked in at the end and got it, or was Brooks good for you? Uh, no, no, Brooks was uh, a small winner. Uh, Johnson just about took the book, so uh, there wasn't a great deal in it. But as you say, I um, don't know what time you went to bed, but it got quite lively for an hour or so. Um, the without market was good for the day. Um, yeah, no, probably just a preferred result for us. Okay, Dukes. Wilco Brooks has now won four of his last eight majors, and yet he's still not quite sort of got the, the, the recognition probably here in the well, media, has he? a sort of star factor on his personality rather than the quality of his golf because he's, he's, he seems like a bloke who's quietly goes about his business, doesn't he, on the golf course. He's yeah. not got the big, you know, the big showbiz sort of thing. He's not doing the Instagram and the Twitter and all that sort of stuff. I mean, he, What he, a player. I mean, he's, oh, he's, he's just a machine, isn't he? I mean, he had a wobble... Um, you know, he had five bogeys in the last eight holes, as you said, you know, and it did get a little bit interesting. But I think that was the conditions rather than the quality you get because the wind really picked up and everybody was finding it difficult as well, which is why there was nobody who sort of like made the charges sort of like five birdies in like six yeah. holes. You know, Johnson got in with a great shout and then he, he had two bogeys, didn't he? And then he... He faded away just as much. I backed eight or more players under par, so that was horrific the way they were. Mm. I, I, I went to bed, like I said, and thought, oh, well, that'll be all right. I'll cop that and mm. woke up and everyone had just fallen away. I think with those hard courses, Glenn, four days like that, you get to the end of it and you're just absolutely beaten up, aren't you? Yeah, I thought exactly the same. I mean, the interview with Matt Wallace probably said it all. Uh, obviously, he wears his heart on his sleeve. He looked like he'd been 12 rounds with Mike Tyson at the end of it, so... Um, yeah, it leaves its mark on players possibly this week as well. The guys that finished the four rounds, uh, yeah, slightly mentally scarred, I would imagine. Yeah, no, it was a, it's a hard course. It was good fun. I, th I enjoyed it. I thought it was a good major. Yeah. Um, and I guess, uh, Glenn, we've got Brooks now very short for the next two. I mean, it's funny, isn't it? Because it's all top-loaded at the start of the year now. We've got US Open next month and then... We've got uh, the Open at Port Rush in July, and I guess Brooks dominates the market for that now, does he? Yeah, for both. Yeah, we've got him now as short as 13 to 2 for the US Open next month. And we have him, sorry, excuse me, just one set, 8 to 1 for the Open as well. So, yeah, probably, probably halved in price from what he would have been before the Masters and obviously after this week. So. But, but, yeah. but, but if you look at how dominant he is now, Wilco, I mean, you, you couldn't say that they're terrible price. I mean, if you remember when Tiger was winning every other week, he was 2-1 yeah. to one for is these. That, I mean, the parallel that you probably do is like two or three years ago when Spieth was right at the top of his game and he was taking these tournaments by the scruff of the neck, wasn't Don't he? Don't like my Tiger Woods parallel? I mean, like I say, he was, he was literally 6-4, to four, wasn't he? Yeah. And he's no less prolific than... than, than um, yeah, it's... Um, now. I mean, obviously, you know, there was... It, Tiger had more credit in the bank as well, didn't he? You know, when he was going off at those sort of prices. You know, he was, we were seeing the greatest player he'd ever played. And perhaps, you know... You say that, this rising. fella could, this fella he could, could of course unbelievable. He could. But, um, yeah, I just think, um, yet, it's, um, you know, th these fields are so packed now. We're in an age where, sort of, I always think at these majors that there's seven or eight players who have really got a great chance and one of them's going to turn up. I don't mm. think we see the Trevor Immelman type major win. I don't think we're going to see that for quite a while. Well, you say that, Wilco, but you just, you know, you do get some. But I agree with you. There's a hell of a, a good cadre of top players now. Personally, how did it all go last week? Glenn, any good? 
Uh, well, obviously, my, my, my two big price tips uh, bombed out quite badly. Uh, yeah, small bit on Kepka just to keep my nose in front. So, uh, yeah, no no million pound in the bank, but I got a couple oh, of quid more than I had last week. <laughs> keep trying. Will come any good? Um, well, I'll see him, Mr. Cut. Rose and Glover faded away, but I can't they? each way so got my money back so. i can't know as well but apart from that it wasn't great but anyway we move on uh and we will look at the american event this week it's the charles schwab challenge at colonial what would this be better known as just colonial wasn't it will Come yeah back. oh all sorts of sponsors doing this oh really okay but anyway you know it as colonial it's that nice tight track uh down at fort worth in devon it's not a slugger's paradise this week by any means if you look at the excellent informative price and form grid in the Racing Post, the key attribute is accuracy. Before the lads tell us who they fancy, spin through Star Sports' latest prices for us, Glenn. Yeah, first 10 in the betting. Uh, Justin Rose, 10 to 1. John Rahm, 11 to 1. Jordan Spieth and Ricky Fowler at 14s. Uh, Francesco Molinari, Xander Schofield at 16s. 25s, Casey, 28, Finau. And 33, Deschambeau and Kisner. It's a strong field, Glenn, isn't it, this this week? Do you think the winner will come from the head of affairs or are you going to look a little bit further down? Shadow of that. One of the things I looked at in the stats, um, the cream seems to rise to the top in this competition uh, year after year. Front of the market dominates. Uh, obviously, the best players hitting the fairways and holding your pucks is the key, and that's what the, the best players do. Yeah, if you look at the past winners... Uh, in the Racing Post form guide, Rose last year at 20s, year before Kisner at 33s, Spieth at 7s, Chris Kirk at 33s and Adam at 18. They're your last five winners. Wilco, who are you going to go for as your main tip? I was really impressed with the way Spieth played last week. I think he's back. I mean, he's had a bad 12 months. He hadn't got, before he finished third last week at um, Beth Page Black, he hadn't had a top 20 since the Open. But that part has got going. That was what was the big thing when he was the best player in the world. He was holding stuff holding stuff from all over the place. He gained nearly 11 shots on the field on the greens last week. He's got a cracking record here. You've already highlighted that he's won here before. Two second places. I really think that playing in Texas is going to be, his home state's going to be a big boost for him as well. I really like him this week. I think he can push on. He's been, talk, he's been talking a good game for the last few weeks without quite getting the results. He's saying, you know, I've been really working hard last six months, plugging away. I know what the problems are. It came, it came for him on a course where perhaps it suited big hitters a bit more, perhaps not right up his street. And this, this track, as you say, it's an accuracy place, lots of dog legs. You know, it's not going to be a big issue that you don't smash it 320 yards. I really think that he could have a big week this week. Wilco, very sweet on speed. Glenn, who's your main tip? Yeah, thanks, uh, Wilco. Uh, Under stolen. Exactly that, yeah. Jordan Spieth, yeah, all in, really. Um, as uh, he said... The putting last week is the key. Uh, John Spieth in his pomp, always a good putter. Been struggling with that club a little bit this year, but last uh, last week, number one in strokes game putting. That was a massive highlight for me. Said his form round here, he's playing in front of his home fans. Uh, just ever, yeah, I I can't see him. It's impossible to get Matt Frame. And I think he'll probably win it. Oh, the lads are very, very sweet on that. Impossible to keep out the frames. Only 156 runners. <laughs> very, very bad. 122, sorry. You're probably yeah. right, Glenn. Right then, Wilco, who are you going to supplement Spieth with? Well, there's a few sort of like a bit further down the list because obviously Spieth's third five. Um, I, I like Scott Piercy this week. He's had a bit of a charge because he, uh, he was 152nd in the world rankings. He's now up to 60. He's never actually won anything, though. Yeah, he um, I mean, he's won three or four tournaments. See? on um, okay. Yeah, he won the Canadian Open one year. And um, he won uh, the Barbasol Championship, which was the, um, the tournament in America that runs um, parallel to the Open Yeah, um, okay. a couple of years ago. So he has got over the finish line before. I mean, perhaps not in fields that are, you know, with this quality, but he's definitely moving in the right direction. He struggled in the last round at Bethpage Black last week with a 76, but I mean, he As wasn't... As we say, who didn't? Exactly, you know, and he hit a 70, uh, 67 on Friday. And um, that, that followed, you know, he was third at the Heritage, second at the Byron Nelson. So um, I think um, I think he can push on. He, he, was, he missed the cut here last year, but um, he was seventh the year before, so there's a bit of um, bit of form in the book. Good driving accuracy, good greens and regulation stats as well. Okay, who else you got? Um, big, um, not concerned about the weather, but it could be a factor this week if the wind picks up. And um, so two players I think who could cope well with that would be uh, Brand Snedeker, who um, I think he's 
picked up in the last few weeks. Um, and the other one's Graham McDowell, who um, obviously comes from Northern Ireland and playing a lot of Lynx golf and things like that. He's a, he's a good wind player. And um, the other one, who I think is a big price, is somebody who caught the eye on um, Thursday at the PGA. With um, He was the only one who sort of like gave Cook a run for his money in the... Uh, First round lead market, Danny Lee from uh, New Zealand. Um, I mean, he fell away, finished 36 after a 77 on Sunday, but um, he's got some decent form figures. Can uh, 90 to 1, I really think he's a good each way poke. Okay, Glenn, you, like Wilco, are also very sweet on Speeth as your main selection. Who are you going to supplement him with? I'm supplementing him with, and uh, not a very original one, I'm afraid, John Rahm. Uh, I'm not a fan of tipping up players when they've missed the cut the previous week, but um, being as it was so tough last week, I think he may benefit from having the uh, weekend off and not playing in those conditions. Uh, we all know he's a good ball striker, good putter on his day. He's been in amazing form all week, all year long, excuse me, up until then. 11 stroke play events, eight top tens and a win. And obviously he paired up with uh, Ryan Palmer in the Zurich Classic a few weeks ago. Uh, two two outings at Colonial, tied second, tied fifth, uh, enough said there. He doesn't stand out anywhere in the rankings overall, but I don't think he really needs to. But overall, he's ninth, which just backs up that his all-round game is, is in decent nick. Another one um, must be involved at the weekend, I think, and um, he's my number two selection. So you're just throwing two darts at this one, are you, Glenn? I've got a couple I'll just a little, a little mention to. Um, Please do. What? One, Jason Cockrack, mainly because he's been on my radar for about seven years now. Still he's been on one. everyone's radar. At some point, he might actually win something. <laughs> he's Honestly, Palmer, every single week, Jason Cockrack's name comes up, and then he never wins anything. But you reckon this could be his week, do you? He's, gonna, he's, he's just playing well, isn't he? Uh, someone mentioned last week, no missed cuts since last summer, which is quite an amazing stat in itself for a guy who's never actually won. Isn't he a slugger, uh, though, Glenn? Uh, no, he eats it a long way, but the one thing that he is another one, a bit like Kepka uh, a few months back, doesn't get the credit for how good a putter he is, which is something I really like. Long hitters who can really putt, so you've got to get it there, but you've got to get it in the hole as well. Uh, four top 10s, 10 top 25s in his last 13 events. Uh, just an amazing runner forward again, I think he, he must show up this week. And a real sort of... Um, Outside one, Vaughan Taylor. I'll admit, I can't tell you too much about this guy. He's very, very sporadic form-wise. But every now and again, he rocks up and puts in a good one. Examples this year, on the back of two missed cuts, he had a ninth place finish. And he's recently had two missed cuts. Last two outings, though, 13th and 17th, as though he's running into a bit of form. At fancy prices, around 125, 150 to one. Three time two winner. He could show up. He could show up as well. I wasn't expecting so, Vaughan Taylor to be tipped on the post because that's yeah, left know. field. That okay, Glenn. <laughs> Excellent. Last week, but I thought I'd have another go this week. <laughs> Jolly good. Okay. Anything else to add in America? Um, yeah. The only other point I would um, say is like this is a this is one of the established venues. They've been playing here since the Second World War. So, but um, one player who's not played here before, who it could suit, um, Francesco Molinari. I was going to say that. I was going to yeah. say that. I fancy him. I think back on a nice before. tight track, he's a winner. I know that people will go, oh, yeah, but what about the Masters? Well, that, that's happened to all sorts of people, including your selection, Speed. So mm. I, I'm going to go. I'm, I, I love your confidence in Speed. I'm going to have to back him now. I'm going to go Molinari. And I think Kisner, who won here a couple of years ago, he's it's, it's retained his form pretty well. Glenn, you, you don't like people who missed the cut last week, but would you give Kisner a chance? Yeah, definitely. He's got form round here. I mean, he's, he's got the sort of game that will be suited round here. It's just that he was, possibly because of the, the length needed last week, he was so poor, really. I mean, I had him on the radar for last week as one of the shorter hitters who might actually compete there, but he didn't at all. Um, if he can bounce back from that, yeah, certainly he can be involved. I think, yeah, I think you can cut people a little bit of slack if they miss the cut. Like, if it was a major, a different sort of uh, venue, because a lot of the Americans venues are quite similar aren't they well, these, these aren't, are they i mean no. you, if you were picking two tour venues that couldn't be further apart then bethpage black and colonial are yeah. about, about the polar opposites aren't yeah. they so the european tour yeah moves on to the made in denmark tournament which i presume is somewhere in denmark yes it is it's at the backley course in himmeland alberg you ever been to denmark glenn uh can't say i have no I've been. I went on a stag in Copenhagen. I've been to Odense, lovely. You've been to Odense? Yeah, I went on a. Yeah. I went on a football tour. Yeah, oh, it was lovely. lovely. Yeah. But it was about 
ten, eight, nine pound a pint or something. So. Yeah, it's brutal. Yeah. Isn't it? The further north you go in Europe, the dearer <laughs> the beer is. Now then, unfortunately, this is another really piss weak European tour field. I've got to say, I'm, I've never known such a difference in quality between the American tour and the European tour. It's a real shame, but it's competitive. You will still get paid out if you back a 14 to one winner, regardless of whether it's a strong field or a weak one. So to set the scene, Glenn, let's take. Uh, take us through the leading prices from Star Sports on the Made in Denmark. Yeah, first ten in betting, we've got eight to one Matt Wallace, uh, twelve to one Thomas Peters, fourteen Bjerregaard, sixteen to one Jordan Smith, eighteen Eric Van Royen, twenty two Jorge Campillo and Torbjorn Olesen, and thirty to one Dubison, thirty three is Westwood and Detry. We'll start with you, Glenn. Who's your main tip? It's not the most inspiring field this week, is it, mate? It's not, no. Uh, but it's, it's, well, I've got a couple of selections of guys that played well last week, funny enough. So if you're looking at current major form, these two guys competed. So you can argue that it's, it's not too bad. My main selection this week, and hopefully he's about to break his maiden tag, Eric Van Royen, uh, another guy been on the radar for a long time. <coughs> Excuse me. Progressing week by week, really. Obviously, eighth place finish last week, where he finished high up in all the major stats, which is testament to how well he was playing. Uh, never won on the European Tour, but shown a liking for links type events. Uh, and if the wind gets up around this open, exposed course, it could play like that sort of venue. Uh, led the Irish Open last year after three rounds in a field that included John Rahm and Rory McIlroy. So it wasn't weak. Um, but he fell away in the last round, probably thinking about the winner's check. Um, shot a 64 in Scotland, again on the Lynx course, showed that he could handle conditions before a tie 17 finish in the Open, where he was only six shots behind Molinari. The guy's got a bit of everything. He can hit it. He's a good putter, a good short game. The only thing holding him back at the moment is his last round, and I think it's at seeing the winning line. And unfortunately, his last round tends to be his worst. If he can overcome that problem, and in a weakened field, I'm hoping he can. I think this week could see Eric Van Royen break his maiden tag. OK, Eric Van Royen is Glenn's main tip. Now, as with the American tournament, we've got the defending champion at the head of yep. the market, Matt Wallace. He played brilliantly last week. Do you think he's a little too short, or, or could you be? Would you put anyone off him, Wilco? I mean, he's defending champion, even though last year's tournament wasn't played at this course, and um, he performed well the year before. Um, it's I've, there's been um, a lot made of um, Wallace and sort of like his uh, mental approach to the game. He had, um, it, I mean, everybody uh, threw their toys out of the pram because he slammed his putter down when he missed a potentially winning putt at the British Masters a couple of weeks ago and he's been trying to sort of justify his actions. I like him. I think he's got yeah. I mean, it's got, I mean, I think the sport needs people who wear their hearts on their sleeves and things like that. I think, obviously, he bounced back well and to finish tied for third it was really good. Now, is he going to be able to... My misgiving about him is that is he going to be able to perform now when he's not under the radar, where he is the man to beat? So I just think he's a little bit short, although he, fought, he finished in great form last year. Um, I'll just quickly tell you a Matt Wallace story. I played golf with Tom Siegel on Monday, and he said that before the, he played in the Pro-Am before the British Masters, and he played with Eddie Pepperell. And in the group behind him was Matt Wallace. And uh, Tom saw him afterwards, and he said, oh, how'd you play, Matt? He goes, he goes no good, I, got, I, I misjudged the air pressure. This is how scientific it all is. The air pressure. That happens to me when I'm stood on the first tee. Yeah, exactly. You know, yeah. No, I think you're right. Okay, I get the thing. Yeah, uh, what's the air pressure doing? Incredible. It's so scientific. Yeah, I'll, I'll, bet, I'll bet Tom had a great time playing with Eddie Pepperell. Funnily enough, he didn't. He said, because poor old Eddie's got a bit of a bad back and I think it was playing up, so I think he was a little bit concerned about that. I, th I said that. I was like, oh, it must have been brilliant with Eddie Pepperell. because no, actually, he was quite sort of introvert. He goes, he was perfectly nice, yeah. but he was feeling his back a bit. So I, I, I don't I, think it you was know, quite, He's a great tweeter. Never he? meet your like heroes. <laughs> Not that, I don't think Tom's hero is Eddie Pepperell, but you know, I think he was, he was yeah. maybe expecting a little bit, but like I said... It, I it, it looked like a good draw, didn't it? Union Jack was playing yeah. up a little bit. Right then, Wilco. Yeah, it's, it's 15 all in the... Um, fund the stolen stakes because um, yeah I'm all over Van Royen as well I did the um, Steve was off a couple of weeks ago and I was going to do the um, I did the preview for the British Masters and I was all over him then and then he dropped out he didn't so I didn't put him up because he withdrew he just before out? well I mean he was obviously saving himself for um, the trip to Beth Page and it, as um, as Glenn said you know he's um, you know eighth place in that sort of company is really good for me he has been knocking on the door and um, 
Uh, Seems to feature every single week on the European Tour. Yeah. I mean, I don't think... Uh, we've, we've spoken about the quality of the field. I just don't think these, these things are taking particularly a lot of winning at the moment. And, you know, it, surely it's only a matter of time until he is in the winner's circle. So, um, I mean, yeah, he's going to be my... 18 to 1, I think he's a good price this week. OK, the boys both fancy Van Royen as well as the South African Glenn. Who else are you putting up? Uh, second selection is one of the uh, home players, uh, Lucas Bjerregaard, again played last week. Uh, good performance, obviously highlighted by the hole in one late on. Uh, guy, he first came onto my radar when he went uh, head-to-head in the 2015 Hong Kong Open with Justin Rose. Obviously he was a two rookie then, but he matched Rose shot for shot for two rounds, before only losing by one. I was very impressed, but it took him a while really to find his feet after that, some indifferent form uh, until sort of mid last year when he started to show his true colours. Um, he's now a two time tour winner. Uh, we know he can hit it a long way. A very that one, a very good putter though for a big hitter. Uh, showed that in the uh, Dell match play where he finished fourth. Uh, currently on a good run of form, so again, highlighted last week. And uh, in, he played here in 2017. And three key stats from that week. He was third in driving accuracy, driving distance, and ninth in greens in regulation, which are all stats we stand you in good stead around here. Uh, another guy, I think, in for a good show. Uh, Lucas Beauregard, my number two selection. OK, any others for us, Glenn? Uh, just Soren Kielsen, another local lad. Uh, I know it's a bit long in the tooth these days, but he just seems to thrive when he plays in front of his home crowd. Full figures in the event, 15, 2, 8, 23, 12, which highlights that fact. Uh, and no, not in a great run of form at the moment. It just seems like home turf brings out the best in him. Played well on Link style courses in the past. In fact, two of his four European Tour wins are on Link's courses. Uh, could go well. Uh, uh, I think he's 55 to 1. So that would be my three for the Made in Denmark. Lovely stuff. As well as Van Roy and Wilco, who else are you putting up? I think um, we could see a big week from Thomas Peters. Oh, come off it. I thought... I th- oh. Why? He's the biggest bloody flatterer in golf. He'll probably go and win now, I've said this, <laughs> but... Well, that's the beauty of the uh, game, mate. No, I can't have him. I mean, I was. I would expect a big week. I do accept that 12 to 1 is a little bit short, oh, but I do think he'll do near. well. It's the worst price I've ever seen. It might win, but the, the amount of time this fella comes marauding onto the leaderboard and then all of a sudden like you wake up Saturday morning and you'll look on the on the app and he's had like he dropped th- four shots in three holes or something no never again never again that's it you're washing your hands I'm totally it. washing my hands of him which is great news for you because I'm well, a terrible judge but well, we'll have to see and um, the other one I like a, a player who has reached the heights on the European tour we haven't seen much of is Victor de Bruyne. Ah, now you're talking. It's all right. We're yeah, friends you again now you've nicked my thunder <laughs> he's back isn't he he's yeah. coming back he's I mean, bubbling poor bloke he, he was off for a year because he had a perforated eardrum and he couldn't fly. Oh my not God. good. Not good if you're a golfer. Oh, he's a bit, no, Dennis you know, Burkamp got away with it. He Dennis Burkamp, train, but, yeah. yeah. If you're a golfer. Not every week. <laughs> it's a bit, of a, a bit of a train to China, isn't it? Yeah. So, um, yeah, I mean, he's back. Um, he came back in February and he's had four top 20s in the last seven outings. Um, 23rd at the British Masters when he fell away at the weekend. But he is definitely moving in the right direction. 28 to 1. Yeah, he's, he's, he's my... Oh, big pump, 30. 30. Yeah, he's my man this week. OK, great. Right then, let's recap the selections so that if people have been uh, frantically jotting the names down but haven't got them all, let's make it nice and clear what, what the boys fancy. So, Wilco, just give us nice and simply your Charles Schwab Challenge selections. OK, Schwab Challenge. Um, Spieth is the main bet. Just give me the names. Jordan Spieth, Scott Piercy, Brant Snedeker, Graham McDowell and Danny Lee. Glenn? Jordan Spieth, John Rahm, Jason Cockrack, and Vaughan Taylor. Beautifully done. And the Made in Denmark, Wilco? Eric Van Rooyen, Thomas Peters, and Victor de Brisson. And Glenn? Eric Van Rooyen, Lucas Beauregard, and Soren Kjelton. Well done, lads. Absolutely superb. Right then, anything else you want to mention? If you're only having one golf bet this week, Glenn, what would it be? Uh, Jordan Spieth. Jordan Spieth. And Wilco? I'll go for Van Royen. Van Royen. Lovely stuff. In the meantime, though, before next Wednesday, we've got the... Uh, what have we got tomorrow? We've got... We're looking ahead to the playoffs and the Europa League final, assuming that takes place. 
Friday we've got racing, we've got more racing on Monday, and we are back next Wednesday with another Racing Post Golf Postcast. Give them the whole